If you actually understand basic algebra, you should be able to figure out the answer to this problem. Okay, so we have 4y squared minus 2y is equal to 0. So we have an equation here, but we do have a multiple choice question. And of course, we want to determine which is the right answer. So our first choice is a 0. And of course, uh, these numbers right here are the solution for y, right? So y is equal to what? We're trying to solve this equation for y. So our first choice is 0. Our second choice is 1 half. Then we have uh, our third choice, which is 1 and 0. And then our last choice, d, which is 0 and 1 half. Okay, feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I want to walk through and show you exactly how easy it is to answer this question, and then, of course, how to solve this equation. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the correct answer here is D, 0, and 1 half. Now, if you got that right, well, I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus any 100%. That is fantastic. And again, as I indicated, as long as you have basic algebra skills, you should be able to figure out this problem. Now, some of you may have said, well, no, I think zero is the right answer. So is zero a solution? Well, indeed, zero is a solution. It works in this equation. Unfortunately, it's not the only solution. So one way you can kind of figure this equation out, uh, the solution to this equation, is to test these values. This is a guaranteed way on a multiple choice question in terms of uh, trying to solve an equation. If you have potential solutions, you can simply just plug these numbers into the equation and see which one works. But we have a little bit of a twist here because if we test at zero, matter of fact, let's go ahead and plug in zero for y. So if y is equal to zero, is this the right answer? So what we're gonna do is replace this y with zero. Okay, so we have four times zero squared minus two times zero. Now, is all of this equal to zero? If it is, then zero is a solution. Okay, so zero squared is what? Well, that is zero, and zero times four is what? That's zero, so we have a zero here, minus two times zero, that's zero, so zero minus zero is zero. So this is a good solution, all right? So zero is a solution. Unfortunately, it's not the only solution. So if you plug in one half, you'll uh, see that that works as well. And the reason why this is the case is that we're dealing with a quadratic equation, all right? So a quadratic equation, and I'll go ahead and give you kind of a technical definition of a quadratic equation. It is a second degree polynomial, okay? So we have to understand what a polynomial is in algebra. And if you don't know much algebra, if you don't know what a polynomial is, or if you wanna really learn this stuff, Make sure to check out my Algebra 1 course. I'll link to that in the description of this video. But effectively, this is a polynomial. Okay, now the reason why it's a polynomial is that we have a variable term here, and the powers here involved in these variable terms are nice whole numbers, right? So things like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. We don't have any negative values, all right? So we have to have 0 or positive whole numbers, right? So if you have a variable to any of these numbers and um, the number in front of the variable is called a coefficient. This can be any type of real number. You can have a fraction, a decimal, positive, neg negative number. That's not a problem. We have to really pay attention to these exponents. So again, if you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., what we're dealing with is a polynomial. Okay, so this is a second degree polynomial and this uh, term degree means the highest power of this equation, right? So the highest power here is two. Okay, so this means that we're dealing with a second degree polynomial, but uh, we call this thing in algebra a quadratic equation, right? So it means the same thing. 
Now, why did I go through all this algebra mumbo jumbo to explain that this is a second degree polynomial? Well, this is really important because we have something in algebra called the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? So the fundamental theorem of algebra essentially states the following. Anytime you have a polynomial equation, the degree of that polynomial equation, in this case it's two, is how many solutions the equation will have. Okay, so this is a critically important concept. So we have a polynomial equation. We look to its highest power, that's two. So that means that this equation here will have two answers or two solutions. All right, so here is only one solution. This is only one solution. Now we do have two solutions right here, but you can see uh, if we test one, one is not a solution in this equation. So this doesn't work. So our final answer would be this, right? So zero and one half. Okay, so if you understand all of this, that is fantastic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and solve this equation uh, directly, just to you know, basically imagine that we had the same problem, but, uh, uh, but it wasn't multiple choice. So we're gonna talk about how to solve this quadratic equation using something called factoring. Okay, so here is our quadratic equation, and this is a huge topic in uh, first year algebra, right? So when you have a quadratic equation, there is a lot to know on how to solve these uh, types of equations. Now, the first thing that we need to understand is that you will have two solutions, and the type of a solution, or type of solutions, excuse me, in the quadratic equation can be real number solutions or imaginary number solutions. So just kind of know that you can have complex and or imaginary number solutions in a quadratic equation, but you will have two solutions. Now, there's different techniques that you can use to solve a quadratic equation. It all depends on the form of the equation, right? Now, sometimes we can take the square root of both sides of the equation. Sometimes we can factor, right? So sometimes we can factor, and I'm going to show you how we can factor this particular equation to solve it, but sometimes you cannot factor uh, a quadratic equation, right? So if you can't take the square root of both sides or factor, then you can use something called the quadratic formula, right? So this is a critical uh, formula, and this formula, the quadratic formula, will solve all quadratic equations, right? But it's kind of a more arduous way to solve a quadratic equation, and uh, you don't want to use it if you can solve a quadratic equation by factoring or by taking the square roots of both sides. And then we have another technique that we can use called completing the square, and this is kind of like the long version of the quadratic formula. Okay, so these are some general things that you definitely need to know about quadratic equations. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation by factoring. Now, the only way you know that you can factor this is by experience. So when you study algebra, you definitely have to have strong factoring skills. And in this particular equation, we can factor out something called the greatest common factor. All right, so what is that? Well, in this case, it's 2y. All right, so I can factor out a 2y here, and we're going to be left with 2y times. I'll put another 2y right here inside of this parentheses, minus 1. All right, so I'll put this in another color blue. All right, so now this is equal to 0. So what I did was factor this uh expression this part of the equation into this right here right so these uh, 2y and 2y minus 1 these right here are factors so what does that uh, mean well let's uh, take a look at a kind of numeric example of factors so here is the number 10 if i said factor 10 well you could break uh, 10 up into factors of 2 and 5 right because 2 times 5 is 10 so 2 and 5 are factors of 10. Now, in this case, 2y and 2y minus 1 are factors of 4y squared minus 2y. All right, so again, we are factoring. This is multiplication, so it's 2y times 2y minus 1. Okay, now, how do we factor? Well, that's a whole other discussion, and if you don't know how to factor, I would say that that would be a definite algebra emergency. If you cannot factor... Uh, in algebra, you cannot do algebra, right? And it's kind of a real classic area 
where a lot of people who struggle in algebra, they struggle with factoring. So if you improve your factoring skills, your algebra skills are going to go up radically. Okay, so again, if you need help with any of this stuff, uh, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Again, you can check out my Algebra 1 course. You can find a link to that in the description. Okay, so now we were able to factor this expression. Now, why is that so important? Well, what we have is this thing, 2y times this thing, and the answer is zero. Okay, so let's just think about this for a second. I have something times something else, and the answer is zero. So what does that mean about uh, these two things that we're multiplying? Okay, if I said to you, hey, I have two things, when I multiply them together, the answer is zero. What can you tell me about these things, right? Well, you might be saying, well, the only way you can get an answer of zero if you multiply things together is that one of these things or both of these things, these numbers, has to be zero, right? We can't get zero from multiplication unless one or both of these numbers or values are zero. And that's exactly what's going on here. We have something called the zero product property. So this thing times this thing, okay, is zero. Okay, we're multiplying. So that means that 2y, okay, must be equal to zero. And 2y minus one must also be equal to zero. Okay, now remember, we're gonna have two solutions here. So what we're going to do is solve these respective uh, uh, equations for y. All right, so here we got 2y is equal to 0. So all I have to do is divide 2 uh, from both sides of the equation. y is equal to 0. So this is one solution. So we already saw that y equals 0 works. Then we have 2y minus 1. So to solve for y in this equation, we have 2y is equal to 1 or y is equal to 1 half, right? I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So this is my other solution, all right? So again, two solutions in a quadratic equation. Now, there's a lot more to know about quadratic equations in terms of how to graph quadratic equations and how the graph is connected to the type of solutions that you have. But hopefully, this is a pretty straightforward problem. Now, again, even if you didn't know the steps to solve this equation directly. If you have basic algebra skills, what you could do is simply plug in these values until you get the right answer, right? But the trick here is to know that we have two solutions. Okay, so again, if you need help with anything mathematics, geometry, trigonometry, pre-calculus, basic math, make sure to check out my math help program. Again, you can find links to all the stuff that you may be interested in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.